today we'll be learning how to use two very useful functions in Excel called the index function and the match function. And then um, after we learn how to use both functions individually, we would also learn how to combine them into one very powerful lookup function to ensure that we're able to properly write the combined function. We, we need to make sure that we understand each function and what it does perfectly and then subsequently we'll learn how to combine both and how to use it for for lookups so um, i'll just put up a sample data set that we can use to test our knowledge of both the index function and the match function and then a combination of both so say uh, population across geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Data set is 2015 to 2020. So here we have uh, Northwest, Northeast, and let's turn this to Central, South, South. East, and then southwest and across here we have 2015 and then I just drag this across and here and select the field series option finally I'd include um, our data set using um, random estimates so um, between 20 and 50. Okay, and I'll just specify here that our data is in um, millions. So this is just a bit more realistic. So now what the index function does is if you have an array and an array is consecutive cells that contain values. So this is an array because all the cells to the bottom contain, contain values. This is also an array, right? This is also an array. So an array is just a selection of cells that are not empty. So what the index function does is it looks within an array and based on the row and column you specify, it tells you what value is at the intersection of the row and column you specified and we'll see it work very quickly. So to use the index formula in Excel, what we do is we start by typing the equal to key. We'll start typing IND for index. Excel already um, makes suggestions and then we scroll to the relevant function, which is the function we want, which is index and we hit the tab key and then next thing to do is to start entering the arguments for, for for beginners if you're just starting to use any function and you still need some, some guidance after typing the tab key the best thing to do is to open what's called the function dialog box by pressing ctrl a now there are two index arguments but we want the first one is the one we need so we'll select the first one and then we'll press ok so it opens this box that then provides a lot of guidance as to how the formula works or how the particular function works. So here we can see that we require three arguments to properly use the index function. There's a request for the array, there's a request for the row number, and then there's, there's an argument for the column number. So the first thing, when, when, once we're in the box that requires the first argument, which is array, if we look at the bottom of the dialog box, it tells us an array is a range of cells or an array constant meaning um, like we described earlier is a selection of consecutive cells so here it would say our array is all of the population estimates across all these geopolitical zones across all the years and then our row number is if we look at the northwest north east north central south south all the geopolitical zones we have six different rows the question excel is asking here is across the six rows you have what row is the value you're looking for and Say, for the sake of this illustration, the question we're trying to answer is what's the estimate of the number of people in Southeast in 2019? So Southeast is in the fifth row, so we say row five, and then we'll come to column. So it says, what column, what column are you looking at in your data set? So we want the year 2019, right? So we're looking 
um, at our data set, we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 2019 is the fifth column. So it means we put a five here saying, we want you to give us the data set and the value in the fifth row and the fifth column of the array that we have selected. After specifying those, you press OK and Excel returns 37. And if we were to audit this formula, we would see that in 2019, the Southeast had 37 million people. So I'll just do it again. I'll, this time I'll write the question we're trying to answer. So what is the population of the, maybe we can try a different geopolitical zone of the North Central in 2016? Okay, so that's our question. Um, to find out that equals index, we scroll to index using our arrow keys, tab, Right, at this point, to open the function dialog box, you can either press Ctrl A or hit this FX symbol um, right that shows right beside the formula bar. So this time, initially we used Ctrl A, but now let's try the FX one. It brings out this dialog box saying there are two different index arguments. Which one do you want? What we're trying to learn today is the first one. So the, the first one is already highlighted, so we press OK. And then it brings out the function dialog box. And it says, What's your array? What's, what's your complete data set where you're looking for stuff? I would say I'm looking for stuff somewhere between all this, the population estimates across all the years. It says, what's your row number? Now, the North Central is in row three based on the way we specified our geopolitical zones. So I press three. My row number is three. And it says, what's your column number? The year we need is in column two because the way we've arranged it, the first year is 2015, second column is 2016, third is 2017, and so on and so forth. So what we need is column two. So I specify two, and then I press OK. And immediately Excel tells us that the population of the North Central in 2016 is 37 million people. And if we were to go back to our data set to check North Central 2016, we can see that the intersection here is at 37. But that's how to use the index formula. Now the match formula is somewhat different but it fits right into the index formula so if you recall when we're writing the index formula we had to specify our row 5 and column 5 manually by looking at our data set and typing it but if we had say 2,000 rows and 3,000 columns it wouldn't be as easy to count where the exact row of the of the data we're looking for or the exact column is so the match function sort of helps us um, solve that problem because it goes within your rows and then it tells you this data set you're looking for is in row X and it goes you can also go within your column and say this column you're looking for this year that you're looking for is in column Y so let's let's try it out so if we come here and we say the question is what row is it for the north west located so two questions and what column is data for 2018 located so we'll answer both questions using the match formula very quickly so we start typing equals um, by the way to start any end function in excel you need to start with the equal to key and then you start typing M A T. It already suggests. We can see up here that the first suggestion is match. So we scroll up to the match function and we press the tab key. Instead of also an alternative to pressing the tab key is double clicking um, the relevant function. So I'll just do that again. It calls match. Scroll to match and then you can double click and it does the exact same thing. And then let's open the dialog box. So it says, what's the lookup value here? All Excel is asking for is what are you looking for? And I say, I'm looking for Northwest. So I just click the cell that says Northwest. And then I come back, it says, where are you looking for Northwest? That's the, what's the lookup array. Also, if you look at the bottom, there's the screen tip for each argument is there. So for lookup array, it says, lookup array is a contiguous range of cells containing possible lookup values. So it says, what's the lookup array? Where are you looking for Northwest? I highlight all the geopolitical zones. So I'm looking for the row that contains Northwest 
across all the zones. It says watch your match type. So here the rule of thumb is if you I want Excel to give me an exact match. I want you to tell me exactly where Northwest is. So I type zero and Excel understands that as you wanting Excel to give you an exact match. Don't give me something close to Northwest. I want you to give me exactly Northwest. Tell me exactly where Northwest is. And I press um okay. Immediately Excel tells me Northwest is in row one and if we looked if we went back to our data set to look at it we'll see that of all the geopolitical zones for our um data set which is this the data for northwest is contained on row one of the data set second question says what column is the data for 2018 located again we can use the match function to answer this so all we need to do is type equals M A T C, but we start typing match excel suggests it and then we press the tab key or you double click and then you can open the function dialog box either by clicking this fx button or by pressing ctrl a so excel again the same syntax what are you looking for i'm looking for the year 2018 and it says where are you looking for it what's your lookup array I'm looking for 2018 across all the years so i highlight all the years and it says what my match type i want you to give me exactly 2018 so i'm specifying that my match type is zero and then i press ok so excel tells me 2018 is in column four again if we audit this and we look at how we've laid out the columns we can see 2015 comes first 16 next 17 and then 18 is in the fourth column so excel tells us that data for 2018 is located in column four of your data set so in a nutshell, that's how both the index function and the match function work individually, right? So if we were to combine them, we would then say, so if we wanted the data for Northwest in 2018, so what's the population of the Northwest in 2018? Here, very quickly, we'll use, um, we'll do an example with a much larger data set very shortly. But if, if we just to bring it all together using this illustration, right? Because we've specified that the row for the Northwest is row one, the column for 2018 is column four. So if I wanted to know the population of Northwest in 2018, all I need to do is do the index formula equals index. And then I open the dialog box and then what's my array? I select all the population estimates. That's my array. What's the what's my row number? Well, because we've used the match function, I know that um Northwest is located in row one, data for Northwest. What's my column number? I want 2018, and I know 2018 data is located in column four. So I select those four here and then I press OK. It immediately tells me. The number of people in the Northwest in 2018, there are 48 million people in the Northwest in 2018. And if we audit this formula, if we come to 2018 Northwest, we'll see um, that there are 48 million people. So in a nutshell, that's how the index and match formula jointly work. Now, if we were to take this to a much larger data set, so here I'll just open a new sheet and then I'll type here, so let's say for sake of this um, imaginary illustration, um, let's assume we have, um, okay, let's use Lagos State. We have 52 local governments in Lagos State. So if I type LJ1 and then drag it down up until I get to LJ52, you can see the counter at the bottom of the screen here. So I'll stop at LJ52. And then I'll come here as well. And here, say we're trying to use a much larger data set. And we're trying to do, say, from 2001, 2001 to 2020. So I'll just drag this across as well. Initially, it wouldn't give me, um, it wouldn't give me um, consecutive values. So I need to click this field option button click the drop down and I select the option that says few series. So yes, it gives me, then then converts the value to a series. And then now I have data for 20, 2000, I have um, cells for 2001 to 2020. Excuse me. 2001 to 2020. And here I'll just type, title this, um, 
state population by LGA and then our values are in thousands. I think that that might be more realistic just so we don't have values that are too large. Okay, um, next step is to enter the data and if you are interested in how I'm able to enter random data very quickly, um, although, I mean, in the course of your use of this function, you'll be using actual data, right? So, and, and there are ways to enter actual, actual data creatively as well. But just in case you were trying to do an illustration yourself, um, you'd highlight all the cells where you want, um, where you want to have values. And then you use the, there's a function in Excel called run between. Run between. So I start typing R A N. I see the option that says run between and if I, if I read my screen tip it says excel says run between returns a random number between the numbers you specify so if i hit the tab key then in excel yes i want to use the run between option it says what i should start typing i press ctrl a so run between option asks you for two things what's the bottom number you want to specify and i say okay i think um at the minimum each area will have if it population of 50,000 and for sake of this illustration we say at the maximum each area will have a population of say 250,000 right and then I press ok now that only um, populates for one cell but to do um, to enter a formula into multiple cells in Excel instead of pressing just enter you use control enter so I'll come back into this formula. So Excel assumes I'm still typing the formula. Um, I come back in here and then I press Control Enter. And then my, for my formula is entered into all the cells. Um, and then just do. Okay, so now we have our data set. Um, it says LJ1 in 2001 has 236,000, um, LJ1 in 2004 has 74,000, and so on and so forth. So now the next step is we have this large data set. And bear in mind, if we're, say, if we're doing this across Nigeria, there will be hundreds and hundreds of rows. And if we're doing population across cities across the world, there will possibly be thousands and thousands of rows. But the index are much function combined still work the same and it still remain easy to apply so very quickly here i'd like us to do something called a, a mini results dashboard so here i'll type local government here i'll type yeah and here i'll type results and then um, i think we should highlight our header rows so we know the rows that are like unique identifier um, i think here we could use blue and for the years we could use gray okay now i'll come here and i'm going to introduce us to an interesting function in Excel called data validation. Now, I mean, ignore the name, it's nothing elaborate. Data validation only helps us create a drop down of values that we don't want um, a user to be able to specify a value outside of these values that we've, we've created in this drop down. So, to do that, on the relevant cell, you go to your data tab. Um, you see a button under the data tools that has sort of a red, a little red dot on it. And if you hover over it, you see it's called data validation. So you click it. It tells you right now for every cell in your Excel worksheet allows you to enter any value you like. But what we want now is for this particular cell where we have local government to allow us enter only specified values. So we click this drop down and say we want a list of values. And Excel then says, what's the source of this list? We click this, the um, dialog box that says source, and then we highlight all our local government areas. Meaning in that cell, I only want you to be able, I only want users to be able to enter LJ1, LJ2, LJ3, LJ4, and so on and so forth. So I press OK. So if we come here, back to the cell, we'll see that there's now a drop down 
um, on the cell and if we click it we'll see all the different um, selections we can make in this cell anything outside the selections wouldn't work Excel wouldn't allow us entire so if I came here and I tried to type local I'll get an error message that says this value doesn't match the validation um, restriction so here if we select for sake of this illustration LJ7 and then we do the same thing for years we only want to be we only want to be able to select the years in our data set and I think for now we have 2001 to 2020 right and that's for those of us very interested in using shortcuts um, the shortcut for your data validation is called a v v and then it brings us here again we select that we want a list of values and then we click put our cursor in the box that says source and then we come up here and we select the our entire array from 2001 to 2020 as our source and then we click ok and then we come here to this drop down and say for instance for sake of this illustration we could select 2004 i'll just align this properly okay now this is where the magic happens now which we're going to combine an index and match formula that helps that tells us the value based on whatever local government or whatever year we specify so i start typing equals index and then i press tab and then i press ctrl a to open the function dialog box and then the first argument is what's the array what's the array where do you want me to look for data and I say I select all the population estimates we have across all the, the LGS. I select that as my array, and then it says, "What's my row number?" I mean, I can look at, I can look at the relevant LGA and try to count where's the what row is this LGA located in the data set. But imagine if we had hundreds of thousands of rows. There's no way that it would be we might be able to do it but it would take an awfully large amount of time and it would be very inefficient so here what we then use instead of having to specify by ourselves we use the match function and here i type m a t so bear in mind if you're typing a function within a function excel is not going to suggest names to you so you need to make sure you type the function you're trying to insert within a function correctly so m a t c h and then i I press a click to open a bracket and I close the bracket. So that's the syntax to tell Excel, look, I'm trying to write a function within a function. And the next thing to do is if I want Excel to open, now I've typed, so now what we'll see now is the function dialog box for the index formula. Now, if we want Excel to open the function dialog box for the match formula, after typing match and then opening a bracket and closing it, I come within my formula bar up here. You can see two red, a red, parenthesis open and close I type within the parenthesis to tell Excel I'm trying to enter the arguments for match and then you see that Excel then brings up the argument that the function dialog box for for the match function so as we've used before as we, as we tried it earlier the first thing the match function asks is what are you looking for and then I say I'm looking for whatever so now this is where I enter with the formula so if I just go back to the index um, very quickly you see that what we're trying to enter now is the argument for the row number so I'll go back to the match and it says what are you looking for in defining what your row number is so I want you to find LG7 and then it says where do you want me to find LG7 and then I highlight all the LGs so I want you to find LG7 um, be, um, from within all the LGS and what's the match type zero I want you to give me exactly LG7 and then I go back I click index I just click the name index in the formula bar it brings me back to what we're typing for the index formula and then it says okay what's your column number again I type match M A T C H open bracket close bracket Excel also understands that I'm trying to use another formula within a formula and then I come within the open and close brackets for the second match function I just click my cursor in there so Excel open the opens the function dialog box for the second match function again it says what are you looking for I want you to look up 2004 again don't forget that when you're using the function dialog box one of the most apparent advantages of using the function dialog box is that 
there's a tip at the bottom that guides you in using the formula. So here we can see that at the bottom your Excel says your lookup value is the value you use to find the value you want in an array. So here what we're trying to say is we want Excel to dynamically give us the row number based on whatever we select in what we've called our result um, dashboard or our result table. The value I'm looking for is 2004 at least right now or whatever I change this to where where do you want me to look for 2004 I want you to look for 2004 within all the years and tell me the column that 2004 occurs in and the match type remains zero I want you to give me an exact match exactly 2004 so once again I come back to index just to make sure I've audited the formula correctly and if your formula is correct you see that Excel even within the function dialog box already tells you the result of what you selected for your array, it tells you, okay, and I know where your array is. For the row number, it, tell, it tells you that I've looked at, you've selected LGA7, and the row number for that is 7. For the match, it says you've selected 2004, and amongst all the years you've laid out, the column number for 2004 is column 4. And if I look at column 4 and row 7 in your array, the value there is 80. That's so even from your function dialog box, Excel already tells you, okay, you've written your formulas correctly, and this is the value you're going to get. I press OK. And here we can come back to our results. And it says LGA7, the population of LGA7 in 2004 is 80. And if we if we were to audit that very quickly, I'll just go to LGA7 2004 and it gives us the correct value of 80. So the interesting thing now is we never have to write this um, formula again as, as long as the data set remains the same. So all we need to do is say if I'm trying to find LGA52, I need to, all I need to do is come here, select LGA52. I'll just scroll down 52. Um, what year? If I wanted 2011, select 2011 and Excel immediately tells me the population is 87 million. And then if I want a different LGA, LGA 48, I select it, I select the year I want, 2013, and the curve tells me immediately 64 million. So that's the power of combining the index and match formula, right? You never have to look within the data set again, as long as you've written the formulas correctly. And using combining that with the usefulness of data validation, it helps you in, in one minute. So if um the if i work in the state house and the governor needs quick data about maybe an area that is experiencing some unrest or something says by the way what's the population of people in lga 10 immediately i wouldn't have to look it would take me just two minutes to come to one minute in fact to come here um just scroll to lg 10 select lg 10 what's the year we're in year 2020 scroll down to 2020 and tells me there are 105,000 people in LJ10 in 2020. Um, so um, that's how we use the index and match function. And there's so many creative uses for the index and match function as long as you're, you're searching within a large like data bank or even smaller ones. It just helps you make the formulas dynamic and stress-free. So after the initial um, slight hassle of writing the formula correctly, um, you're never going to have to write it again. So um, have fun using the index and match function. And if you run into any problems, feel free to reach out to any of the members of the Leonine team um, right here on our YouTube channel um, in the comment section or on our Instagram, Twitter um, or LinkedIn pages. Um, thank you very much for watching.